what is a proof of stake blockchain and what does it mean to stake your Solana with a validator on that blockchain? Realized recently that there are a lot of misconceptions about what staking is, how it works, and why you want to do it. So before I get into the details about what is the best way to actually stake your Solana, which is going to be in the next video, I wanted to take a quick moment to actually talk about how staking works and why you should at least consider doing it if you're doing nothing else with your Solana. Let's go. So as you already know, if you're following along in this little playlist on YouTube that I'm making, I am partnering with Marinade Finance in order to bring you some educational information about staking and the ways that you should be staking, or really even why you should be staking in the first place. And of course, you already know that none of this is financial advice because I'm not a financial professional. But I think it's really, really important to talk about what staking even is. And how does it actually decentralize the blockchain? It's going to be a little technical, but not overly technical. When I want to get into the real weeds, I'll start talking about how to operate a validator and how that's going to work. But for now, I want you to consider this for a second. We are talking about a proof of stake blockchain. Immediately, you're like, wait a minute, Knox, Solana is proof of history. Well, that's called the consensus mechanism. That's how the Solana validators choose to vote on valid transactions and blocks. And already, I'm hitting you with a lot of key terms. I want you to think about this for a second. Here you are sitting here on your computer, right? And you open up Phantom and you click the accept button or the approve button to approve a transaction. What happens next? How does it actually move the NFT into your wallet and remove the soul from your wallet? Well, that's kind of a big thing to really wrap your head around and understand. When you click this upset button, what it's done is it sent your request for this transaction, first of all, to the first layer of defense for Solana. These are called the RPC servers. And the RPC servers, all they really serve to do is be a gateway into the Solana blockchain. They handle the incoming requests. And they are deployed all around the world, like you would expect. In fact, this is what Genesis Go does really, really, really well. And if you're familiar with this whole shadow thing that they going, have going on, deploying RPC servers was really the first piece of the puzzle. This is what I have been running with the shadow protocol since January. The idea here is I can spin up my own RPC server as part of the shadow network, and they send transactions to my server to handle at the first layer of defense. My reward for doing so is I get paid in the shadow token. That's what the, the RPC servers do. Is they're the gateway. They handle the incoming transactions. And what they do is they look at this request that's come in and they make sure, okay, does it pass my first inspection? Does it, does it meet the eye test? Does it look good? If this does look like a Solana transaction, what they then do is they send that on to the next layer, which are the validators. And this is where the actual Solana blockchain itself is created and maintained. The validators, what they do is they're also a group of servers and they look and feel exactly like RPC servers. In fact, they almost do the exact same thing. The setup for them is almost identical. The hardware requirements for them is almost identical. The difference is, is that these validators will look at the transaction and they'll say, okay, well, what's happening here? Knox is trying to send to Soul and receive an NFT in exchange. So what are they validating? Well, first of all, they're validating, does Knox have two soul to send? And is the place that he's sending it to, is that a valid address? Can they accept the Solana that I'm trying to send? If that answer is yes, it goes on to the next step in the transaction. Okay, 
Well, who is sending the NFT back? Do they have an NFT to send? And is Knox ready to receive that NFT? If all of that checks out okay, then the validators vote yes to allow that transaction to happen. That's how the Solana blockchain is actually working. But the validators here play a really, really, really important role because they're the ones who actually look at the transactions and change the blockchain. That's right. If you think about what they're doing, they're the ones who validate that this transaction can occur and they vote to say yes, that this can occur. When all of the votes look good, these transactions go inside of a block and that block is what makes the block chain, just like this. It's a chain of blocks that hold nothing but transactions that have changed the state of all of the accounts. That's how the blockchain works. So the question then becomes, well, wait a minute. These validators have an awful lot of power, don't they? They're the ones who can change the blockchain. So we need to take a careful look about how do we trust these validators? Are we sufficiently decentralized in order to trust these validators? And this is where staking comes into play. Remember in the previous video, I said there's really two pieces of the puzzle to decentralize a proof of blockchain. First of all, we have to have many different people deploying validator nodes all around the world. That's a really, really important thing to do is to have validators spun up by different people all around the world in different regions. Would you say your blockchain is sufficiently decentralized if a hundred different people all deployed validator nodes, but all deployed them inside of the same building in Dallas, Fort Worth? No. If something happens to that building, blockchain go down. Would it be sufficient enough to say that a hundred people deployed a validator node on their own individually and each of those validator nodes is in a completely different building spread out all across the world. One might be in Hong Kong, one might be in South Africa, one might be in the UK, one might be in Saudi Arabia, one might be in the United States, one might be in Colombia, one might be in, you know, Perth, Australia. But you get the idea. Now we're spreading that risk out of having all of these different parties who can change the blockchain go down all at once. And beyond that, because it requires so many votes to actually approve a transaction, it's nearly impossible to get all of these people to collude together and maliciously change the blockchain. That is decentralization. That is how the decentralization of the blockchain works. The validator nodes all are deployed around the world by tons of different parties such that it's nearly impossible for either some sort of natural disaster or collusion to disrupt the blockchain. That's how it works. But, but this is the big kicker. In order for these validators to actually be good validators, trusted validators, they require stake. They require stake. When you, the consumer who has soul sitting in your wallet doing absolutely nothing, you can put that soul, actually, you know, I'm going to walk that back right now. You can take that soul and say, I trust this validator. I know that person or that company that's running this validator. I know that they aren't doing anything malicious. I know that they have the capability to keep this hardware online which is not always the easiest thing to do because it is a lot of work to run and maintain a validator. I trust this validator is what you are explicitly saying when you stake your Solana. And because I trust that validator, I'm willing to let them know that, you know, I'm committing my soul in order to do, in order to let them actually walk through the process of uh, running these, the, these votes on the, on the actual blockchain. The benefit to you and to the validator is, of course, a reward. You end up with more soul than you started with. But I think one of the biggest misconceptions that happens here is, do you think that your soul is leaving your wallet and now living directly on that hardware? 
Did you just deposit your soul into their wallet? The answer is no. It is still your soul. This is how it works. When you have soul in your hot wallet, I'm going to put the hot wallet in blue here. Let's say you want to stake five soul. And right now that five soul is in your hot wallet. And your target is my validator node. Nox's validator node is going to be written in pink. My validator node is called Juicy Stake. You can find it in Phantom right now. So you want to take that five soul and you're like, you know what? I trust Nox. Nox is going to keep it up and running. I want to put some soul with his validator so that it can be a trusted voter in the ecosystem. What happens in between when you actually go to stake your wallet is your phantom wallet is creating a special kind of account called a stake account. Your original hot wallet is the controller and owner of that stake account. The five soul that you want gets moved into the stake account that you still possess and control so long as you possess and control your hot wallet. Then from there, what you're doing is you're delegating your stake account's stake, basically your committed soul, you're delegating it to the validator. It's not leaving the stake account that you own. You're just delegating the voting rights of the stake account to the Juicy Stake Validator. Still your soul. It's still technically in your wallet. You've just delegated the voting permissions to Juicy Stake, who is rattling off the votes. Now check this out. You want to see it in action? I'm sure you do. Check this out. I've gone ahead and I've logged in to my Juicy Stake Validator right now. You're looking at the console of my Validator node. Do you want to see how many votes this Validator node is actually just rattling off all the time? I'm going to fire off this command real quick. Let's do this. I'm going to hit up. And what it's doing is it's going to look in my log file. Every time Solana does something on this node, it's written to this log. But I'm parsing out anything only if it has voting somewhere in the text. Watch this. Watch how frequently this thing is voting. Boop. There it goes. Just like this. You see right there in the red, kind of in the bottom right corner when it says voting, right there, voting, voting. That's when it's actually firing off a vote. Just like that. Voting, voting. It's constantly voting on whether or not these transactions are good and can be uh, successful in doing so. So this is how decentralization of the Solana blockchain works. This is how validators process transactions, vote on them, and create blocks on the blockchain. And this is why you, as someone who is actively engaged in the Solana community, in the Solana ecosystem, can get a huge win by decentralizing the network, is by staking your Solana onto a validator node. Now, if you watched the previous video, you heard me say something pretty important. And that was maybe, in fact, even probably, staking your Solana on a validator might not be, in fact, it probably isn't, the best way to actually stake your Solana. You really only do that when you know the party that you're staking with, like Juicy Stake and you know me, and you really want to show support to that party. There might be a better way to actually handle this, and that's where Marinade Finance comes into the play. I would argue that Marinade Finance is arguably the most important player in the entire Solana staking ecosystem. And in the upcoming videos, I'm going to tell you why Marinade Finance is so incredibly critical and how you can get a huge win by taking a look at how their stuff works. For now, this has been how staking in the Solana ecosystem works. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. See you in the next one.